Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this delightful saw-handed mech. This model is the XT45 from World War Design. I built this model a couple of weeks ago, and if you would like to see the build video, there will be a link in the description, or you can click the handy card in the upper right corner of the video now. World War Design is a small one-man operation just starting out with their own line of miniatures, so do check them out and give some support. That would be awesome. Let's begin painting. I started as usual by priming. For this I've used black Steinal Res primer which I think is quite good. Obviously if you don't like Steinal Res you can use whichever primer you like. I would be surprised if you were surprised that I've painted this thing red. Mostly because you would have seen it at the beginning of the video. If somehow you didn't, I decided that red would be a cool colour for this. I airbrushed on the base coat of Vallejo model colour red. This does take a couple of coats before it starts looking good and solid, but that's okay. Almost everybody will agree that it's better to do multiple coats than to cake the paint on in one thick layer. The colour wasn't quite what I wanted though, so I figured why not apply some model colour vermilion which is quite bright and almost an orange colour. It is a bit brighter than I was expecting or really wanted, but that's okay. Things can always be darkened down or changed. To begin this I apply a coat of Army Painter Red Tone. This was thinned roughly three parts red tone to one part water, so it was fairly heavy. I applied it all over the model. I'm trying to avoid letting it pool up, and I want it to settle mostly in the gaps and recesses. This has made a pretty significant difference and has darkened down the recesses quite a bit. You could do this with a darker colour, but using the red tone makes it a bit more subtle, and a bit less dirty looking. I felt like a light dry brushing to bring out some of the edges and detail -y bits would be a good idea, and initially I did this with straight model colour vermilion, and I did complete the application, but it didn't quite turn out as I'd hoped. It was a bit too subtle, so I did it again with a mix of roughly three parts vermilion to one part model air white, because I didn't have a pre-mixed colour that I thought would be suitable here. Maybe I need to do some paint shopping. I apply the dry brushing as before, focusing on edges and raised bits of detail. It is still kind of subtle, but it stands out a bit more than just plain vermilion did. In some places the dry brushing wasn't enough, particularly around the slot in the front plate. So I took a brush and applied it along the edges there. Then I thought, why not apply this along the tops of some of the bolts and other surfaces that I thought might need a bit of extra highlighting, just to bring them out a little bit more, but not too much. I didn't want everything to be red, so to add some interest, I took some model colour black grey and applied it to these pipey things at the back of the mech's body. I figure these are probably related to the little bits lower down the back that kind of look like pipes as well, so I painted those with black grey as well. I'm obviously trying to be pretty neat here, but touch ups can always be made. I used the same colour to paint the various jointy bits, that is the technical term by the way, jointy bits. Things like between the leg parts and the upper body. I also put it in the joints of the arms and legs, because I thought doing this would break up the red just a little bit. It is kind of messy at first, but hey, in progress projects are usually a little bit messy at least. I later used vermilion to touch up the edges that don't look like there would be any moving parts there to remove the paint, but I didn't film it. Good job Herbert, you ding dong. I also applied this to the ends of the flamethrowers. It does make sense that they would be some darker colour, and I figured it was probably a good idea to put this on the ankle joints as well. It is certainly a bit fiddly to get in there, but I feel like it was worth it. I had considered doing some more areas in grey, but I didn't want to go overboard. Next, a decal magically appeared. Because this is a Russian mech, a star seemed appropriate. This one came from a Tamiya set, I think it was the 148th scale KV-2, though really any Soviet star would probably do. With the decal in place, it's time to do some weathering. I start with some sponge chipping, done the same way that I usually do sponge chipping. The paint mix is roughly 70% model colour black grey and 30% mahogany brown. I mostly apply this to the edges and places I think there might be more chances of things coming up against the paint and chipping at it. That makes sense doesn't it? I'm also trying not to go too far with it, which at least for me is often easier said than done. 
I follow this up, using the same colour as I often do, with a fine brush and the application of some longer scratches, and also some chips in areas that I just couldn't get the foam into. The big scratch along the front is a bit too big in my opinion, so while I was using the model colour Vermilion to add some scratches to the decal, I also painted along one side of the big scratch, which I think has made it look a bit more visually appealing. It is a bit harder to see on the camera, but I'm happy with it. Next I decided to use some Model Air Dark Sea Grey, and using a small crappy dry brush, because my good big one wouldn't fit in here, I apply some Dark Sea Grey to all of the grey areas. It is a subtle look, and it does have the chance of being a bit messy on the red areas, but that could actually work as a bit of extra wear on the paint, so I'm fine with that. Touch-ups with the red colour would be fine too. Now it's time to paint the saw blades, and because I'm not a smart man, I didn't hit record when base coating them with model colour gunmetal. You can see now though that I am dry brushing highlights around the edge of the blade, and for this I'm using Vallejo Model Air Steel. I didn't want any chipping on the blades, so that's why I've done this after applying said chipping. As you can hopefully see, the dry brushing brings out the edges of the blade nicely and gives it some depth. I'm pretty happy with how this looked. You can see that I also painted the little disc part on the arm because I thought that would add a bit more interest. I figured it probably wasn't a bad idea to darken down the vision slot on the front of the mech, so I painted some undiluted army painter dark tone in there. If this isn't enough when it dries, I can always add some more, or maybe some dark enamel later on. Another part I didn't want to receive the same chipping as the body are the jet nozzles on the back. I painted these with Vallejo Model Air Steel. This isn't too tricky, but when doing this kind of thing it's always advisable to take your time and paint carefully. You can of course always clean it up later, but who wants to do that? If you're slow and careful, you don't have to. I did have to. I figured it was a good idea to paint the insides of these with steel as well, even though I will put something darker in there later. Once that was done, I gave the model a coat of gloss varnish in order to protect the acrylic paint from the coming enamels. First, I used some AK Interactive exhaust wash on the pipey bits. I figured this would work as a nice kind of dark stainy colour. I also applied this around the venti things on the sides of the body and near the ends of the flamethrower. Around that, I guess that's meant to be some sort of retaining device for the blades. I then use a clean or cleanish brush with some thinner on it and remove a lot of that colour. I didn't want it to be too heavy. I applied a bit more around the end of the arm between it and the saw blade and then I removed most of it again. The idea was just to create a little bit of depth and maybe a bit of staining on the blade. I've decided that the blades would be pretty clean, perhaps recently being replaced. Next I applied some spots of AK Interactive Light Rust Wash to the pipey bits. I went quite lightly with this, and I did remove most of it, again with a cleanish brush and some thinner. It's almost entirely gone, but there is a little hint of it left behind. This mech is going to be dirty, but not rusty. In my imagination, this part is just a bit more prone to rust than the rest of the mech. I follow this with some AK Interactive Landing Gear Wash, which is perfectly fine to use on things that aren't landing gear. I applied this pretty much all over the model in gaps and recesses and around bolts and things like that. I even put some in the front slot for extra darkness. Who doesn't like a little bit of extra darkness? I guess I'm kind of using this a bit like a streaking grime of sorts. It's a nice looking dark colour that I thought would work well, so I figured why not. The application is quite messy, but I feel like that's a better, or at least quicker way to apply this, rather than carefully painting it exactly where I want it. I left it to sit for a short while and then, unsurprisingly, I remove a lot of it with clean thinner. I do the removal mostly in downward strokes so that it looks like rain and weather have been causing the dirt and gunk to run down the mech due to the perilous forces of gravity. Because this is enamel, you can remove and reapply it as much as you want until you get your desired result. What I ended up with might be a tiny bit more dirty than I initially intended, but I was happy with it, so I sealed it in with another coat of gloss varnish. Then I thought, why not try something I haven't used before, this MIG Subtle Dirt Filter. I kind of like the sound of subtle dirt. It's the kind I like. So I applied it to the lower parts of the model mostly around the feet and legs. I figured with dirt that would make sense. 
The X-T45 is in 28mm scale, and so it's pretty tall compared to a 28mm scale figure. So in my mind, the upper parts probably don't have that much contact with the dirt. I think it's worked pretty well, and it's subtle, just like it says on the bottle. I'm pretty certain that I'm going to use this stuff again on future projects. And then, why not something else I haven't used before? MIG oil and grease stain mixture. I put this in areas that I thought would make sense, that is to say in the moving parts of the arms and legs and such. Again, it's going on heavier and messier than I intended it to be, but that's because it's easier to remove the excess than to perfectly apply exactly how much I want. I feel like it's a bit more natural looking when you use thinner to remove the excess, and spread it around and streak it down the parts. This is another product that will almost certainly see future use. I think it's looking pretty good. As a final touch I took some Model Air Black and gently applied some scorch marks around the flamethrowers, though I didn't film it because I'm a ding dong. I also thought about doing this around the jet nozzles, but I liked the way they looked and didn't want to risk ruining that. I applied a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, and the World War Designs XT45 Soviet Mech is now painted and the popsicle stick skis have been removed. Sure it's not your typical Soviet green, in fact it's not green at all, obviously, but I thought red would be fun and interesting. Maybe this is a special branch of whatever Soviet military exists in this universe. It could be some sort of fast branch or something. Because, as we all know, red goes faster. There's always a fun story that we can come up with, though the reality is, of course, just that I thought red would look cool. And if you don't paint your models in ways you think would look cool, well, what's the point really? As I said earlier, this model was sent to me by World War Design, for the purpose of making a build video. A painting video also seemed like a good idea to me, so I've done that, as you hopefully can tell. And I certainly do hope that they appreciate my take on this. I think it's turned out really well. There's a link to their Facebook page in the description, so if you like what you see here, or if you don't like the way I've painted it, you like the model, why not check their page out and show some support? I feel like it's a good idea to help and support the people in the community. And it looks like their next mech is close to being available, so that's pretty exciting. Maybe by the time you see this video, you'll be able to pick one up. So go and check it out. Like I said before, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. It's a bit more dirty than I had initially intended, but it's not dirty in a beat up way, if that makes sense. It looks like it's been quite well used, but also looked after. And the not beaten up look is really what I was going for. I was originally considering having dirty saw blades, maybe covered in blood or something like that, but I kind of liked how the cleanish metal colour contrasts with the rest of the model, so that's the way I did it. Same with the jet nozzles on the back. My story is that the blades have just recently been changed. Not much of a story really, but it's plausible. Surely they break and wear, so every now and then need to be replaced. Okay, so clearly I haven't made a base for the X-T45 yet. I was thinking of just building up a bit of green stuff and maybe putting some rubble on a base and pressing the model into it, but I don't have enough green stuff for that. So I guess the base can wait, and maybe I'll do a standalone video for that. Just don't hold your breath for it. In the current situation, it may be a little bit tricky to get some green stuff. I think this thing looks pretty cool without a base anyway. It looks like a menacing lumbering beast. Pretty rad if you ask me. This is by no means a complex paint job, though of course there's nothing wrong with simple, and I think it's effective, which is what matters. I've tried out a couple of new enamels that I was happy with, and that's always nice too. If you're interested in replicating my efforts, or you just like one of the colours I've used, there's a list of the paints I've used in the description below. Of course I do always like to encourage people to use whichever colours and techniques they like, rather than just blindly following what somebody else has done, though I do hope there's something you find helpful in this video. So what do you think of this paint job? Would you have chosen a different colour? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Unless you can't be civil, in which case just keep it to yourself. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, and all the other things you can do on the internet. 
And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with anybody you think might get something out of it? Links to all of my things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.